The screencast covers the material in Module 5, Lesson 10, where we find the areas of rectangles that have mixed numbers for length and width. Uh, this was a hands-on activity with a practice set, so I'm going to use the practice set to demonstrate how to complete the work assigned in the homework. Okay, here's an example that's very similar to what you're going to see in your homework. We have a representation of a rectangle, rectangle B here. And they're going to write in some values here for you, uh, just in case you have a little difficulty interpreting, interpreting the diagram here. So what we have is a width here, or we can call it length, it's the longest dimension, of four units. And here we have represented two and a half units. And it's, it's decomposed in part to two, and then this part is one half. So if we take a look at this, we have how many units here in the upper portion of this diagram. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course, we could multiply four times two, and we would get eight. So we'll write the value of eight in this section, and that's eight units uh, squared, because we're talking about area. Now if we look at the next part here, we have one half. So how many one half? Each one of these is one half. Uh, and we have one, two, three, four of those one halves. So what are we going to do? We're going to just uh, write a, an expression, four times one half, and that equals four halves, and that equals two. And that's, again, units squared. So to find the area of the whole rectangle, we need to combine these. We have our eight units squared plus two units squared, and we have a total of 10 units squared. So we'll say that our rectangle is four units long, two and a half units wide, and we have a total of 10 square units. Again, in some cases you're going to be given the diagram, uh, we, you will be given the dimensions of each part of this, and use the representation to make the calculations to fill in the blanks. Let's look at another. Here's another rectangular representation, and we'll label this, it'll be labeled for you in your homework. We have a one and a half by five here. If we look at a representation, it's pretty clear that we have our five. The drawing's not perfect, but you get the idea. So again, we're going to decompose this, right? We have uh, this section here is one, and this section here is one half. So again, we have five ones. So our measurement for this part with the one by five is five units squared. Now if we look at the other section here, we have half units. Each one of these is a half unit. And what do I have? I have five half units. I'm going to draw an arrow. So we have five times one half. And that of course equals five halves. And we can change that to a mixed number, two and one half. So this is two and one half units squared. So we now combine the two. Five units plus two and one half units. These are units squared. Equals seven and one half units squared. So what do we have? We can say this is five units long, one and a half units wide. We can uh, change those values, we could reverse them, it doesn't matter because of the commutative property, we can change the order of factors. And our answer is seven and one half units. In your homework, you're also going to have some problems where you do the reverse. So you're going to get the values here. We have three units long, and we'll say one and three fourths units wide. And we'll need to calculate the total area, but first we need to make our diagram. So let's let's make that diagram. I'm going to do this by hand. So I'm going to say we're three units long. And 
and we're uh, one and three fourths. And I'm going to decompose that, so I'm going to do this, and we'll put three fourths, and I'll put one here. We'll put in our dotted lines. Okay, let's look at our diagram. We'll start with the holes first. Well, I have three hole units. One times three is three. So I'm going to label this three units squared. Down here, each one of these is three fourths. So I'm now going to multiply three times three fourths. And that gives me nine fourths. I'll change that into a mixed number, and I get two and one fourth. So this is two and one fourth units squared. So now we find the sum of the two. These are like partial products. Three units squared plus two and one fourth units squared equals five and one fourth units squared. So now we can answer area equals five and one fourth units squared. Uh, we also have some other sorts of problems here. This is from the practice set once again. And there's a couple ways we could do this. We have a rectangle to the right is composed of squares that are each two and one fourth inches on each side. What is the area in square inches? Explain your thinking using pictures and numbers. Well, we have a picture here, right? And we know that each one of these is two and one fourth. So if we want to find the area of this, we could simply find the length of the whole large rectangle here. We can find the width. Okay, by finding the sum of these numbers. And of course we're finding the sum of, of the same numbers, repeated addition, so we could also multiply. I'll do one with multiplying and one with dividing. So I have the length equals two and one fourth plus two and one fourth plus two and one fourth plus two and one fourth. I'll find the sum of the whole numbers, which is eight, and we have four fourths. So we have a length of nine square inches. Not square inches, excuse me, that's length, so it's nine inches. So that's nine. Now let's find the other one. We'll use uh, multiplication this time. So I have three times two and one fourth. I'm going to change that, uh, that mixed number to an improper fraction. So I have three times nine fourths. Now we have three times nine over four which equals 27 fourths. Bring that over here. 27 fourths. Well, I have six and three fourths. So I found the length and now I found the width. So I need to find the area. Area equals length times width. And we can use a number of approaches here. We've uh, done this multiplication before. We have nine times six and three-fourths. Now let's solve this using the area model that we used uh, earlier in this lesson. So I'm going to make a rectangular representation. Not necessarily the scale, but good enough. We have nine, okay, nine inches. And we have six and three-fourths inches. So I'm going to decompose that six and three-fourths. Now I'm going to multiply 6 times 9, and I get a 54. And now I'm going to multiply 9 times 3 fourths, which equals 27 fourths. And we know from uh, right here that 27 fourths is the same as 6 and 3 fourths. So now we're just going to take uh, our partial products here, find the sum of 54 inches, six and three-fourths inches, and we get a total of 
60 and 3 quarter, 3 fourths inches squared. Okay, I have a pair of problems on this page. Uh, this one is from the practice set, and the one below is from the homework. They're very similar to each other. They parallel each other. I'm going to work through the problem set one and point out the parallels in our uh, homework equivalent. So let's uh, look at the problem and uh, read it, then draw a picture. A rectangle has a perimeter of 35 and one half feet. If the length is 12 feet, what is the area of the rectangle? Let's draw a rectangle. So we know that the perimeter equals 35 and one half feet. And we know that the length is 12 feet. And we know with rectangles, opposite sides are equal. So we, the width here in each one of these cases here is going to be the same. So let's take our 35 and one half. And we're going to subtract the lengths. So I have 2 times 12 equals 24. So we have 24. And we get 11 and 1 half. So this 11 and 1 half is split among these two parts right here. So we have to find half of 11 and 1 half. Well, we haven't really learned how to do the division with that, but 11 and 1 half is easily turned into a decimal, and we can manipulate it that way. So I have 11 and 5 tenths divided by 2. I, 2 goes into 10, or 11, 5 times. I subtract. Uh, I get a 1, bring down that 5. And 2 goes into 15, 7 times. We get a 14. Subtract, we get a 1. Tack on another 0. And 2 goes into 10, 5 times. So each one of these sides here is now 5 and 75 hundredths, or we could just say 5 and 3 fourths, since we have been working with fractions. So we'll bring it back to fractions. How do we find the area? Area equals length times width. So I now have 12 times 5 and 3 fourths. This time I'm, I'm going to change the second factor into an improper fraction. So 12 times, well I have 5 times 4 is 20 plus 3 is uh, 23 fourths. Now we have 12 times 23 fourths. And I'm looking at that 12 and that 4. I have a common factor of 4. So this becomes a 1. This becomes a 3. We now have 3 times 23 equals 69 square feet. The problem below is very much the same. We're going to do the, use the same procedure. We know the perimeter. We know the length. We're going to double that length. We're going to subtract it from the perimeter. We need to divide by 2. And then we need to do the problem out, uh, either by changing our uh, mixed number fra uh, factor into an improper fraction or by distributing whichever works best for you.